Hello, my name is Keno Thomas and today we're going to be talking about the atmospheric composition and the levels of the atmosphere. This is part of the basic weather theory section. As pilots we have to have a thorough understanding of basic weather theory and these sections are designed to help students acquire knowledge of basic weather theory and to develop their skills and develop their decision making to determine whether a uh, flight should be conducted or not when hazardous weather occurs. So this is one of the basics. The Earth's atmosphere is kind of si similar to a blanket of gases that protect us from the sun's ultraviolet rays and helps sustain human, plant, and animal, and animal um, life. Without the atmosphere, we wouldn't have any oceans, clouds, or protection from the sun rays. Although most people think that the atmosphere is composed primarily of oxygen, um, you'd be surprised to find out that it's really not. Oxygen is a very small or smaller portion than you would think. The Earth's atmosphere is comprised of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% of trace gases which are carbon dioxide, argon, helium, and neon. So only as, oxygen is really a small part if it's only 21%. So, this brings us into the levels of the atmosphere. I'm going to tighten in on the board and we're going to talk about it. We're going to make our little planet here. And there's our polar region. And we're going to close it even tighter here so you can see it. Okay. So, the first level of the atmosphere it's called the troposphere. The troposphere, or the word troposphere, is derived from the Greek word trope, which means to turn or to change. And there are a lot of weather changes going on in this troposphere, more than you'll find in any other level of the atmosphere. This, atmosphere, this part of the atmosphere is just primarily characterized by having weather, clouds, storms, and temperature variations. These temperature variations um, are attributed to something what we call a lapse rate. If we leave the Earth and we climb, we'll find that every thousand feet we'll probably lose a couple degrees Celsius um, per thousand feet that we climb. Our lapse rate continues to a certain point here at the edge of the troposphere called the tropopause. So I'm going to write in here troposphere which is the first level of the atmosphere and then we're going to make our next level of the atmosphere called the stratosphere. The stratosphere is a layer of the atmosphere that's characterized by very stable air and a little bit of weather. Our stratosphere. And we'll widen out a little bit so we can see our stratosphere. Now, typically, our next, uh, I won't go into that yet, our next section is called the mesosphere. Then we have a thermosphere. And then we had outer space, where the space shuttle hangs out at. Now, in our troposphere, we have a tropopause, and there's a strata, there's a stratopause, mesopause, but here we're gonna focus on just the tropopause when we talk about pauses. Okay, so that red line is the tropopause. Stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, outer space. Now, the troposphere is a region, and we'll talk about altitudes now. The troposphere, uh, the polar regions can go as high as 20,000 feet, and in the equatorial regions, can go as high as 48,000 feet. 
the stratosphere goes from 48,000 feet to 160,000 feet. The mesosphere extends out to 280,000 feet. Coming out wrong place. And the thermosphere eventually fades into outer space. So just to tighten in again, you see your planet, 48,000 feet, 20,000 feet at the polar regions. We have a stratosphere that comes out to 160,000 feet. We have the mesosphere that extends out to 280,000 feet. Then we have our thermosphere that extends there and eventually fades into outer space. So that's pretty much it. We talked about the composition of the atmosphere and we talked about the atmospheric levels. But the main thing we're going to really be focusing on is what goes on in the troposphere. Because this is where we fly our planes at. Unless you're going to be an astronaut, <laughs> uh, you really wouldn't need to focus on the other ones. But it's just a good idea to just understand the atmospheric levels. Okay, so that was atmospheric composition and the atmospheric levels. Thanks for watching. Bye.